It's Jeff Summers with Watch You Know, and today I'm going to be giving you the review and my opinion on the Pagani 1728. You know, I want to let you know what might be a little bit different about my channel than some of the others, is that when I review a watch, I have exclusively worn that watch for several weeks. So I can really give you an idea of what it's like to live with the watch. In many cases, even more than several weeks. But I've at least had two weeks to wear this watch every day, and some of my initial impressions have changed. So, if you like the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. But let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Today we have an homage of one of the most expensive watches out there today, and that is the Patek Philippe 5711 in Tiffany Blue, which actually was the last of Patek Philippe's Nautilus line, uh, with only 170 pieces being sold. Originally $52,000, but when the first one went to auction, it sold for $6.5 million. So the prices are astronomical. Now, along comes Pagani, and they make an homage of this beautiful watch by Patek Philippe. And we're going to find out today how well they have done. Just some of the basics of this timepiece. We have uh, 316L stainless steel construction. The crystal is sapphire. There is loom on the hands and on the indices. And the watch uses a Seagull ST16 automatic movement, which honestly is a bit crude and unattractive. So it's no wonder that it's not a see-through case back or a display case back as the Patek Philippe 5711. There's no need to show off this Seagull movement. Uh, it does give you 36 hours of power reserve, and I found that that number is on the low side. So I've been getting somewhere around 40 to 42 hours of power reserve in the several weeks that I've been wearing this watch. It is hand windable and hacking. Gives you an accuracy of anywhere from 10 to 35 seconds loss or gain per day, which is fair for a watch within this price range. The case diameter is 40 millimeters, and that is not so different than the Patek Philippe Nautilus, but what is very different is the thickness. So in the Nautilus, we have I believe it's something like eight or 8.6 millimeters thick. Here, it's much thicker, 14 millimeters. So that may be something that turns a lot of people off about this homage. Lug to lug, it measures 44 millimeters. Has a good heft to the watch at 116 grams, 100 meters of water resistance. And the bracelet is certainly Patek Philippe-esque because it looks very similar. And of course, it's not made of any precious metal. It is that 316L stainless steel. You'll see that the bracelet uh, clasp is engraved with the Pagani logo. And something I've noticed about the clasp is that it takes a lot of digging to get underneath that clasp. So if you don't have long fingernails, uh, it's going to be an issue. I did an unboxing of this watch and ran through all the specs as I've just basically done. But after several weeks of wearing this timepiece, I can tell you a few things about it that you should really be aware of and of course the first is obvious and that is that this watch does not have a date window and to me that's 
a definite negative drawback because it's an homage and the Patek Philippe Nautilus has a date window. It would have been nice to see a date window on this. I personally think they should have put a Seiko NH35 movement in here. So it surely would jack the price up of the watch. But nonetheless, I think that might be a thing that they should have considered at 109 or 119 dollars sometimes i think right now it's on sale for 109 uh, 50 dollars 159 169 something around there not a bad idea if it is going to add to the price i don't even think it would have to add 50 dollars more because that's just if you buy one of the movements so they're going to get a bulk rate so it probably just increased the watch i don't know you know 15 20 bucks and i do think that would be worth it to have that date window another thing that i feel would be better for this watch is that if there were screws in the bracelet instead of pins uh, because i found that the bracelet adjustment was a bit difficult and i had to mess around with it and I, I always like screws better. I know in the current Patek Philippe's, they don't use screws, but nonetheless, I really like those a lot better. I find they're much easier to work with. The screw down crown is not very responsive. You really have to dig in there with um, your fingers and it is not the easiest thing to screw down there are many positives with this watch one has to be that it is just an eye-catching color and makes a great conversation piece this design is absolutely timeless this Patek Philippe design the bracelet design is just superb the way it tapers down and I find that the loom is pretty decent uh, the case back is nothing too special they did put their logo on their pagani design as well and the model number 1728 and uh, again you wouldn't want to show off this movement it's nothing spectacular to look at but overall i think they've done a really fine job pagani has uh, the biggest drawback is that lack of a date window and the most positive thing is really that case design it's just elegant and beautiful and if the tiffany blue is not your cup of tea you can choose from a white dial a dark green dial and also a blue dial and they all look quite nice so at 109 or 119 dollars do i think it's worth it absolutely and i i surely would think it's worth it too if it was 150 dollars uh, with a better movement that would show a date window okay so there you have it you made it to the end congratulations if you like the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm really excited about my next watch that I'm going to be sharing with you. So stay tuned for that. Ring the bell notification so you don't miss it. And I wish you a great evening, great day, great night, whatever time it is. And I'll see you in the next watch review. Bye.